Yeah, so um, uh, although a lot of my work has been more taking a long-term view of risks to infrastructure, um, this particular project is very much about uh, incident management. What do we do uh, when things go wrong? Um, and I suppose I got, got into this after seeing uh, a number of floods uh, and other uh, extreme weather events impacting what seemingly uh, appeared to be very similar communities, towns, well-off, uh, well-developed uh, locations. And yet, in some places, we saw communities really struggling to get back. And in other places, recovery processes uh, and the impacts of individual flood events were far lower. So I want to say, could we actually do something? Could we try and figure out how the role of individuals, communities, and other key stakeholders mediates the risk and resilience uh, of flooding of those areas? Um, uh, and so as part of that, I kind of looked around and found, uh, found out about agent-based modeling uh, and looked at some of the uh, excellent and well-developed models in the fire uh, sector and started trying to translate that into uh, flood extremes uh, and so developed a coupled agent based and hydrodynamic simulation uh, that is driven by a series of uh, spatial data sets uh, and uh, agent behavior rules describing how individuals and organizations respond to uh, what's in front of them or warnings or information or, or um, uh, 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 extreme weather um, and then from that extract a series of uh, metrics which give some sense of impact uh, and, and resilience and risk uh, and of course this allows us to test a wide range of different scenarios uh, whether those are actions to try and uh, enhance resilience and mitigate the impacts of an event uh, or whether uh, to look at how different, uh, if you like, characteristics of an event unfold uh, and impact uh, on the outcome. So uh, the sort of the magnitude of a storm surge, which flood defense uh, fails, or uh, how much uh, warning or, or um, the time of day even that uh, an event uh, occurs. Um, and the kind of the outcome of this was uh, this, this sort of model that was developed in a, a, an agent-based modeling platform called NetLogo. Uh, and what we can see here is that uh, in a, uh, 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 an imagined flood in this case, although this particular town, Tawin in North Wales, did flood in 1990, uh, uh, this number of flood defenses did not breach. It was just the one. But if we imagine here, we have loads and loads, a huge set of water coming in. Um, and we give a warning to our population to get out, get moving quickly. Um, unfortunately, the warning only arrived when the water uh, breached the defences in this scenario. Um, but what you can see, and you see these red blobs, uh, uh, a very crude uh, looking sort of uh, visualisation, start to move and, 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 and build up in queues and, and congestion uh, on routes that head towards um, an evacuation shelter that uh, I don't know whether this was um, uh, a sort of sense of humor of the visualization department in my university, but where the, uh, they plonked the logo on this video for me. Um, so the warm embrace of the Newcastle University logo uh, is where they're heading. Um, and you can run these simulations, and this is one very, very extreme and, 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 and imagined uh, scenario. But by running lots, you can start to understand a wide range of impacts and also features of, of uh, um, resilience. The, the visualization I showed is very crude. Um, it's uh, one of the great things about NetLogo is that it's um, very easy to set something up, uh, but uh, it comes with a lot of deficiencies, which is, is why I'm particularly pleased with this project. I'll come to that in a moment. But underpinning all of this, although you see this kind of coarse raster-based visualization, underpinning all of this is a, an awful lot of data. Some of that spatial data, looking at transport networks, the location of uh, residential uh, properties, but also where people work, where they go shopping. Um, that there's uh, data uh, from, uh, although pre-processed, not live, it's, this isn't a digital twin, um, uh, but understanding how people's, you know, go about their daily business, what sort of traffic patterns we might see on a school day as opposed to on a weekend, uh, and so on. So we start to build up uh, patterns of generic uh, 
uh, uh, you know, transport movements uh, and pedestrian movements uh, through the uh, day. Um, but we can start to then look at results of this. This is actually a result of um, uh, replicating the 1990 flood event in Tawin, a single breach in the middle of the sort of the, the main flood wall, uh, and all of those red blobs or red lines show areas where people are exposed to what I've called kind of dangerous flood water, that is water of about 30 centimetres or deeper or above a certain velocity, the sorts of thing that might sweep someone off their feet. Um, it's not quite a, a predictor of death, um, uh, as some people wanted, because, you know, it's not, it doesn't quite work like that. Um, but this allows us to give a sense of this is what might happen uh, under this set of assumptions, uh, uh, and uh, whether those are the uh, hazard uh, or uh, population response. One of the things that I also thought was very interesting was comparing it to a fairly typical um, flood risk assessment. Um, and uh, uh, an early case study of uh, some of the national flood risk assessment was, was done in, in Tawin. And so comparing the risk from that model, which looked at the expected damages to property against the sort of expected exposure of people to dangerous flood water, um, gives some interesting results. And this is where I think this sort of modelling uh, comes into its own, because if we were to prioritise our investment on the basis of economic damage to buildings, we'd end up going where uh, those three arrows are. Um, if we were to prioritise it on the basis of human safety, um, we'd end up uh, investing mostly over to the east of that picture. Um, and that's just a feature of where more people live, but also where roads and locations can get trapped by uh, flood water swinging round uh, uh, because of the, the topography of this area being uh, very flat. We can start to explore a range of evacuation sites um, and understand uh, different uh, strategies for getting people out, getting people to safety, and end up with a wide range of different metrics, which I, I won't talk about now. Uh, we can also start to look at congestion in the transport route. Uh, and, and this is where, again, I think it can become quite interesting looking at these because um, there's local congestion, but there's also regional congestion. Certain times of day of a ferry docks, huge amounts of traffic suddenly goes along the coast road, uh, which uh, could pose significant challenges uh, towards uh, evacuation. So what's this project going to do? Um, well, <laughs> the first thing is that, as ever with some of these models, they're developed under smaller projects, and, and, and uh, let's be honest, the code uh, is a bit of a hash. It's freely available on GitHub, but I wouldn't recommend trying to get in there. The first thing we're going to do is recode it in Python uh, and put it on Daphne. Um, I think there's some really exciting opportunities for then integrating that within the Daphne workflow. In particular, I'm keen to uh, allow decoupling of the integrated hydrodynamic model, which is, um, again, uh, 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 not the best available, uh, and explore coupling that with some of the other models that are on Daphne. For example, uh, CityCat that I think we might hear a bit more uh, about later. And then improve the visualization using Daphne's new visualization capabilities um, and extend some of the resilience options and scenarios uh, to look at. I'm uh, supported by colleagues at Newcastle, Robin Wardle and Janetta Stein from our research software engineering team. So we know that the coding is going to be good. Uh, and the environment agency who initially funded this project many years ago uh, are really keen to come back and uh, uh, help drive uh, the next generation of its development. And so with that, thank you very much.